Welcome back to the kitchen, guys and girls. It's your boy, Mark, the Mad Chef. Uh, I've got a really amazing video lined up for you guys tonight. We're doing another burger video. We haven't done a burger in a while. And you guys really eating up, every pun intended, my very first burger video featuring the Mushroom Swiss Burger. I've got a link in the description and a card floating around. At the time of this recording, it's been out for about a week and a half and it's gotten about 176 views and a lot of great positive feedback. So thank you guys. In the past week, week and a half, uh, I have received uh, somewhat of a really large uptick in subscribers and views. And guys, I don't say it nearly enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate each and every last one of you. This is what makes it worth it, honestly. Um, so I don't ask, uh, don't do this nearly enough. So if you like this content and, and you want to see more of it, please hit that like button, smash that bell, share this video, tell your friends. Um, always looking to get more subscribers by the day. Guys, I love you. Uh, so this is a very special video because we're not only going to be making a gourmet burger, but we're going to be making a barbecue bacon double cheeseburger paired with seasoned steak fries. So let's not waste any more time. We're going to have the smoky and sweet in the burger versus the savory spice of these beautiful fries. And I'm going to show you how to make all of it right now. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get to prep. And what you see in front of me are six, um, medium red potatoes cut into, you know, steak fries like I like to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit them with a brine. And all I'm going to do is put them in this bowl and submerge them completely with water. And then I'm just going to heavily, heavily salt uh, the potatoes and the water with kosher salt. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to work out some of that extra starch and the salt's going to penetrate these potatoes. It's going to take a lot of salt because it's a lot of potatoes. So I'll show you how, guys how much salt I'm going to put into this after I put some water in this bowl. All right, so we've got our spuds completely submerged in water. I'll we'll open the spout in here. And I am just going to just let this fly. You want it to be very salty. And now I'm just going to stir all this up. And make sure all these potatoes get hit with the brine. And we're going to set this to the side. While we're doing prep, we're going to let this brine up. You want it to at least brine for about 15 to 30 minutes. All right, now let's talk about our star of the show, and that is our barbecue bacon cheeseburger. Now, we could have just put a couple slices of bacon on top of this burger and call it a day, but we can make this more elevated. We're going to take this to Notches Unknown. We're going to be making a barbecue glazed bacon. That's right, we're going to do it all, and we're going to do it right now. So all I want to do is I've got eight strips of thick cut bacon and I'm going to season this with this Branscombe Pit of Steel BPOS Sweet Mesquite Barbecue Seasoning Rub and guys I've already done a video featuring this and guys uh Branscombe Pit of Steel if you guys are watching me from Lubbock Texas I love you guys and this is a second video your stuff is so good it deserves a second video no I'm not sponsored but you support your friends and this is what it looks like Please visit them. I'll have links to all their stuff down below. Y'all ought to try this. It is life-changing Texas barbecue rub. All right, so we're just going to hit both sides of this bacon with the BPOS. Now that we've already gotten our bacon seasoned up, we're going to go ahead and paint both sides with my sweet and spicy Kansas City barbecue sauce. This is going to act like um, basically it's going to act like a barbecue glaze and it plays really well with this, uh, Texas barbecue seasoning. And guys, if you've not watched the video on how to make this beautiful barbecue sauce, I'll put a link in the description and there will be a card floating around. This is going to be really delicious. All right. And now that we're done making a complete wreck of our prep area and our bacon is fully sauced, there's only one last thing to do. And we're going to top this with some nice black pepper. I don't know about you guys, but there's just something incredibly magical about bacon with black pepper. I love black pepper bacon. And this is going to go really well with our 
barbecue season. I'm just going to spread that out a little bit. Make sure we got some even coating going on here. And that's all we're going to do for now. That's all we're going to do. Um, whenever our burgers are halfway done cooking, we're going to go ahead and put these in the oven. And we're going to cook these in the oven and get them all nice and glazy and crispy. And it's okay to have them draped over the side of your cookie sheet. The reason might be obvious why I have this lined with parchment, and that's because this is going to stick, and this is going to not be easy to clean. So now that we've got our beautiful black pepper bacon barbecued, we're going to clean our work area and start working on those burgers. This may very well be the most insane burger recipe I've ever come up with, but I'm here for it, and I'm glad you are too. Like usual, we have two and a quarter pounds of ground beef. And we're just going to hit that up with Branscombe barbecue seasoning. Guys, this is all you need. We're just going to do this to taste. I'm going to add a little bit more. All right, so if you guys don't have Branscombe pit steel barbecue rub, you can use a homemade rub or your favorite barbecue seasoning, as long as it's a barbecue seasoning of some type. We're trying to keep this cohesive here. All right, and the only other thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of salt just to make sure everything is well seasoned. Not a lot because there is salt in the barbecue seasoning. And a little ground black pepper. Again, small, small portions here because you already have seasoning like black pepper and salt and spice. This is just to ensure that we have a balance of flavor. All right. Then we're gonna form these into our burger balls. Right. And these are our beautiful barbecue season burger balls. We're gonna put those to the side and then we're gonna start making the batter for our seasoned steak fries. So like with most seasoned fries, curly fries, there is usually a seasoned batter that you're going to dip your fries into. So this is going to be no different. I brought out my trusty recipe book because I just finished studying and learning how to make something similar to like an Arby's type curly fry thing. So we're going to be attempting this. Um, this should be pretty close on the mark. It smells good. So that's a good indicator that it's going to taste pretty good. So what I've got in this bowl is one cup of all purpose flour. And to it, I'm going to be adding your curly fry seasoning. And that is four teaspoons of kosher salt, four tablespoons of smoked paprika, four tablespoons of ancho chili powder. If you guys don't have that and can't find it, I would just say regular chili powder will work just as well. Um, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper and one tablespoon of garlic powder. Sorry about that. And then we're just going to... Toss this in and whisk it until everything is smooth and combined. I'm just basically trying to level out some of the clumps in the flour and making sure that we get it as smooth as possible before the water gets introduced. Make sure everything gets seasoned properly. And we're going to try to make a loose batter out of this. So we're going to be adding two cups of water to it. Now, if it's sludgy and thick, then of course, gradually add more water. But after two cups of water, this should thin up pretty nicely. This almost smells Cajun in a way. I'm just going to hit this up with just a little more water. All right, that looks about right. And this is what it looks like. See how loose that is? How it moves easily? All right, that's what you want. All right, and now it's tater time. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit at a time. Shake off any excess, well... Take two, 
we're going to shake off any excess brine. These potatoes just do not want to go in. And then start tossing them. And this is actually coating them really well. I should have thought this through a little better. And keep doing that until you've coated all of your potatoes. All right, and that's kind of what you want to see. You don't want to see any bare exposed potatoes. So we're going to wash up and get to cooking. Now, as per usual, we are going full smash style with these hamburgers. So we're going to start by searing off roughly three of these at a time. I'm going to leave them alone for about three minutes, and this is on the medium-high heat. Now that we got this steering off, we're going to start adding in our seasoned fries, small batches at a time. Make sure you shake off the excess. These are going to fry pretty violently because of the batter that's in them. So don't ever fill your fryer because it'll start to foam over very quickly. We're still going to go for a six minute cook time on these like our normal fries. All right, it's been three minutes and let's take a look at how these guys are going. Not bad. Getting a nice color on these burgers. So we want to flip these. Smash them down real good. And you want to cook them for another three to four minutes until all the pink is gone. All right, it's been six minutes and this is the moment of truth right here. This looks like a success from what I can see. So all we're going to do now is we're going to take these guys out, hit them up immediately with some kosher salt. as we do. Give them a good toss. And then I'm going to show you how to very carefully drop these in. I got a new stand that didn't exactly work out for me from a, you know, for my phone. So I've got to do these camera angles a little differently till I can afford um, a new stand and possibly a camera. That would help a lot. All right, so very carefully. Do you see how that's bubbling up really quick like? That's because of the liquidy breading that we have on it. So two small batches like that. And it's also super important to shake off any extra batter before putting them in. All right, so we're gonna continue this until all of our fries are done. And we're gonna cook this burgers the same way until the burgers are done. So I'll meet you at the halfway point, then we're going to start cooking our bacon. So we have reached the critical halfway point with our burgers. So now we're going to take our beautifully glazed bacon, hanging from end to end, hanging from end to end as we have it. We're going to put this in the oven on 350 for 15 minutes. I will be checking it halfway through for doneness. We're about to witness one of the most amazing assemblies of all time. All right, so you take your toasted buns because you always toast your buns. I mean, who doesn't toast their buns? Is it you? If you're not toasting your buns, then we're not talking. Take this wonderful homemade Kansas City barbecue sauce and apply generously to the bottom. Again, guys, if you don't have the recipe yet, you need to get it. Links in the description. Take one of your smash burger patties. And then you take a beautiful slice of cheddar cheese. And you know how we do around here. A second burger patty. 
and then a second slice. But we're not done yet. We're taking this beautifully cooked glazed bacon. Two pieces. Make a cross hatch on the top. And you are bearing witness to one of the most beautiful burgers in existence. Let me wash up. Let's get these steak fries on the plate, and I'm excited. We're going to cut into this thing like the crown. Yes, I realize I put the bottom bun on top. Even after careful scrutinization, I still mess this up. And that is a monster double cheeseburger. Let's take a taste because I am, I have been stoked to try this. Wow, this is amazing. Now, 15 minutes on 350 gets this bacon cooked through. It's still moist because of all the barbecue. Now you can choose to cook it for longer than that if you want it to be really crispy and really dry. But I wanted that barbecue glaze to still be wet to add an extra level of moisture to your burger. Savory, spicy, salty. We have nailed the Arby's flavor tonight. If you go home with this recipe for my seasoned steak fries, you can always adjust to either a bigger batch or a smaller batch. Just make sure you increase or decrease the amount of batter and seasoning proportionately. Remember, I use six medium red potatoes. So if you're going with three, then you cut everything in half increase by an appropriate level and then you'll be able to get the same consistency as i did with these fries guys again this is hands down the best burger and the best fries i have made on this channel yet uh comments questions anything else list them below please don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell and share this video with your friends until next time i'm the mad chef and this is amazing and so are you see you next time Oh, 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 oh,